Um, I'm now going to take you out into the suburbs from central London. Um, uh, we've been working this year on this loop of the Thames. Uh, down the right-hand side is the Barn Elms foreshore. Um, you've got Hammersmith Bridge at the top of the loop, and we were, we were looking at right down to almost to Beverly Brook um, along the bottom there. This, this is Beverly Brook. Um, that Beverly Brook is the old parish boundary with Putney, so we didn't go beyond there. Uh, we were <laughs> sticking strictly to Richmond Borough. <laughs> Um, the original TAS survey, Thames Archaeological Survey in the 1990s, which was the forerunner of the TDP, um, uh, they organised um, local societies to actually look at the foreshore. That's how it was done then. Um, it was done by local archaeological societies who had a river frontage on their patch. And um, Richmond Archaeological Society um, included Barn Elms in what they looked at, and they actually found um, a number of features on the Barn Elms foreshore, including two fish traps, Barn Elms 1, they called it, and Barn Elms 2. Um, on this... Um, this plan of the river was um, from a molar monograph which was finally published in 2008 but included work done in the mid 1990s um, the two fish traps you have barn elms oops I pressed the wrong thing I beg your pardon <laughs> okay, uh, I'll get my finger on the right button. Barn Elms 1 up there, and you can see that on this plan, they're both shown as actually being virtually in the river, and Barn Elms 2 here. The Barn Elms 2 is very near the slipway of the sports centre that's now on the, that foreshore called Barn Elms Schools Sports Centre. Um, Barn Elms 2 was discovered in 1995 as I say by Richmond Archaeological Society and it was actually recorded by them in 1997 this is the original plan from the monograph such as it is <laughs> that's a mean low tide on the left um, you can see that Barn Elms 2 was the traditional V-shaped fish trap pointing downstream. But we had to go at scaling it up properly. Um, on the right there is a, a 0.63 tied line. Um, it was originally eight roundwood posts, um, three on the near the riverside and uh, five uh, going further away from the river and you, can, you see indicated there two posts on that side which were sawn at the time and sampled. So we have eight roundwood posts in a V-shaped configuration. Um, the posts then had heights between 15 and 31 centimetres above the foreshore. On re-examining this, we found them between 2 and 15 centimetres, whether that means erosion, um, rather difficult to say. Sapwood and bark were present, present on most of the posts. Now, the samples taken at the time gave dates 660 to 890 and 670 to 950 AD, so sort of squarely in the Saxon period. The paper suggests that Barn Elms 2 here um, might have been for catching migrating eels, perhaps similar to Chelsea 1. So a group of us, myself and husband George and Janet Ellis, who is here today, and her husband, um, she's a Barnes resident and from, uh, we looked for the eight posts back in March 
of Barn Elms 2 at a 0.28 tide, but only found five posts at that time. Um, you can see more or less where it was. We're just upstream of Fulham Football Ground on the other side. Um, subsequently, George and I went down. That, that's a block of apartments opposite the fish trap. Um, and that's how close it is to the sports centre. And that's looking upstream. Now, subsequently, George and I went down uh, uh, a few more times. And on the 11th September, at 0.78 tide, we actually found all eight posts, shown here by red marker flags. So this fish trap is still intact, as originally found in the 1990s. Now, also on this foreshore, a layer of peat at low water seems to extend right the way down from at least the top of the river loop down to Beverly Brook, and there's more on the Putney foreshore beyond. And now again, during the TAS survey in the 1990s, a length of about 750 metres of peat was seen and some measurements taken. Um, it was then estimated to be about 20 centimetres thick, with the top at circa minus one and a half metres OD. Now, a tree stump sticking out of the peak was seen during that survey in the 1990s, and if this is the same one, then it's still there. Now, in association with the peat, bones of red deer, cow and oryx were found in the 1990s, and this piece of antler, we hope and believe, that um, we found it this year in association with the peat. We, we, we do hope that this is a piece of oryx antler. That's yet to be uh, confirmed. The oryx, of course, was the original wild cattle of Britain and Europe, twice the size of a modern domestic cow. Samples taken in the 1990s from the base of the peat yielded dates of cow 10,360 to 9,050 years, and the top of the peat 6,600 to 6,000 years before present. This suggests, if the dates are reliable, this peat began to form at the end of the last glaciation. Now, the other fish trap, Barn Elms 1, further up towards Hammersmith Bridge, was also discovered by members of Richmond Archaeological Society circa 1995 and first recorded 95 to 6. Again, the published paper shows only this rather schematic diagram of the fish trap showing the 21 posts originally discovered. The posts were recorded as spaced circa one metre apart except for three wider gaps, circa three metres wide and their height between 1 and 22 centimetres. This was suggested this might have been a barrier structure, perhaps similar to Chelsea too, perhaps running out to an ayat or island. Now, in this map of 1798, which is mentioned in the references for the monograph, and I tracked down to Richmond Local Studies Library, um, does seem to show, along this part of the river somewhere, uh, an island. Um, it's shown more or less level with Barnes Church, but that might be an artistic licence. As evident from this more modern map, the island has now disappeared. Now, the 2008 paper suggests this fish trap might have been for catching fish swimming downstream, perhaps eels, on their autumn migration. Our new survey this year located the posts, but not all 21 of them. We found initially only nine, and the missing ones in the row, although carefully looked for, seem genuinely to have gone. Two posts sampled in the 1990s gave dates of 560 to 810 and 430 to 670 AD, so again, Saxon. This photo taken on the 26th of August this year at this 0.77 tide shows how the posts march towards the bank at an angle. This slide shows their position opposite the Crabtree pub 
on the Fulham side. Then on a subsequent visit on 24th of September, at the 0.77 tide, we actually found some more posts. Um, now we believe there were originally, if this is the full number of posts now, um, you can actually see them marching off into the water because actually the tide was coming in by then. You can see our flags just sticking out of the water. Point my pointer up there. There's some, some more posts actually in the water there. Um, but the missing ones are still missing. Um, so we now think there was 24 posts because we found three at the river end. And although the missing ones in the row are still missing, as I say. Um, now this slide now shows a scaled up version of the original line of posts with those three gaps, 21 posts on the right, and on the left is the new configuration with the extra posts at the river end, but with a few posts still missing, and we do think they are genuinely gone. So feature lengths originally 23.2 metres, now 29.3 metres. Nearer to Beverly Brook, there are a number of, sort of odd little groups of posts that haven't, as far as I know, been recorded and might, you know, um, be worth looking at in the future. Now, just as we were feeling good about finding the extra posts in Barnelms 1, what should happen by but the Gloriana? rode by, a, as you can see, a, Beverly, a bevy of young ladies. So, what nicer way to finish our survey, and what nicer way to end my talk.